All right, y'all. Post-game video. I'm going to let y'all see my face tonight. No blackout. Uh, look, man. I told y'all. That was game 19. Game 20 is against the Houston Rockets. And that is going to be a test of tests for Zoe. That'll confirm if he is truly ascended. But um, let me just say this. The Pels won. I'm happy. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? But, hey, post this motherfucking stats, though. You know, po go ahead and post his stats. Uh, like I also said on Twitter, go ahead and post Bledsoe's stats because he was the clutch person this game. Uh, and... <laughs> Boy, the boys was acting the fool at the end. That man gave, that man gave Zion a, a alley oop. <laughs> Bledsoe gave gave uh, Zia alley oop, and it was just like game over. But you know, John real ass nigga, because John's like, fuck it, if I'm gonna lose, I'm gonna try to duck on someone. That man really tried to duck on Zion. <laughs> that shit didn't end well at all. But yo, we gonna post the motherfucking stats. Um. Zoe had 16-7-7. Uh, Bledsoe had 21 points. Um, shit, let me see. I don't remember. Because I'm sitting in front of my PlayStation right now. Uh, let's see. I know B.I. had... Let's see. Here we go. Go to game details... Box score. Okay, here we go. Yeah, B.I. had 27, uh, 27 points, 12 rebounds, 3 assists. Zion had 29 points, 4 rebounds, 5 assists. Uh, Steven Adams had 4 points, 2 rebounds, 1 assist. That's, well, he was plus 23. He had the highest plus minus on the team. Hey, Blesso, 21, 4, and 5. Uh, it's plus 22. Zion Williams got the lowest plus minus, but that's probably playing with them suckers on the bench. He got a plus minus of 14. Uh, Zoe got 16-7-7, like I said. Uh, 21 plus minus. Uh, if you guys are interested, he shot 4-6 from 3 and 6-11 uh, of 11 from the field overall. Uh, let's see, is there anybody on the bench worth mentioning? Not really. Uh, oh, Kira played today. Let me go ahead and say that. Kira played today, six points, a rebound, four assists. I really like what I saw, Kira. Now they get, keep, <laughs> now got a DMP for his troubles. Uh, wow, Josh Hart has a point. He, he was getting some crucial ass rebounds, though. I'm going to give him that, though. Uh, but yeah, you know, the usual suspects. The usual suspects. Uh, look, I don't really have the same energy I had from yesterday because uh, I'm kind of tired right now. But uh, look, Lonzo did his thing, per the usual. Uh, this, like I said, this is a game I thought they should win. But if they would have lost, it would have been a schedule loss. I'd have been okay with that. Um, but Memphis just don't have anything for them. And they're injured where it matters most. This game was a lot closer than it should have been, especially because the bench keep giving up the damn lead. Um, and matter of fact, let me go ahead and talk about that while that's fresh on my mind. Look, your bench unit is JJ Hart, Willie Hernan Gomez now, and then Kira or now, depending on who's playing what. And then Zion. You don't have enough playmaking and you don't have enough ball handlers. Let me go back up here and scroll up. In the starting lineup, and most of you guys know this if you've watched or played basketball any length of time. Starting lineup has three ball handlers. Both guards and Zoe and Bledsoe, and then you have Brandon Ingram, right? Zion isn't really a ball handler. Let's just keep it 100. He's not a ball handler. Um... His ball handling ain't that tight yet. Um, so, at worst case scenario, you got two other people who can facilitate, move the ball, dribble with the ball, get to a certain spot on the court, yada, yada, yada. In this bench lineup, 
you just got Zion, Josh Hart, JJ, Kernan Gomez, and Kira. Kira is the primary ball handler, however, JJ Reddick is handling the ball way too much, and then Josh Hart really don't have the handles to handle the ball. So then you just have Zion left. It is so easy to get a lead on this team because once you take the ball out of Kira or Nal's hands, whoever's playing, they don't have to, like, there's no pressure being applied because none of those guys can do anything with the ball. None of them can facilitate offense. None of them can deal with the pressure. None of that. If I were staying, instead of instead of pulling Bledsoe first, I pull Zoe. And I pull Zoe because Zoe is, first of all, he gives you defensive leadership on the court. One of the things that's being underrated is he's playing a Draymond Green role on this team, except he can score. But matter of fact, if I was going to measure him up, the 2016 Warriors that went 17 with well, 73 and, uh, and and nine, he's that Draymond that was averaging like uh, 14 seven and seven. That's what his stats should come out to after everything processes tonight. It should be about 14. Well, not the 77 part, but basically that's where he should be at in the realm of that range. Um, I would pull Lonzo because Lonzo, first of all, he's going to bolster their defense. He's going to be a leader for the second unit that they desperately need. He's going to organize them. You can play Nall next to him if you need to for scoring. And he can run the offense. And plus, he can still play his defense too. Um, and you give him more time to take shots for himself. And he can help Zion get easier buckets too. But the other thing is it gives you guys another ball handler who can deal with the situations that can get people in positions. Josh Hart and J.J. Redick are not those players. Um, I don't know what the fuck this is that Stan is doing. Um, it's worked against garbage teams. But against good teams... Not at all. Now, if JJ's hitting his shot and Kira's hitting it and stuff like that, you might have some games where they can do some things. But it's not consistent. Uh, as you, If you watch this game, anytime Kira got off the ball, they struggled. And they started passing, you know, throwing air passes and turning the ball over. You want to put Lonzo Ball with this second unit. And then he can get that simultaneous run next to Zion. You would keep Bledsoe in next to Ingram because it gets Bledsoe an opportunity to get his offense going. He gets to also play uh, prolonged defense on the guard because he's going to take the, the weaker guard assignment. So that means he gets the later, once that guard is worn down by Zoe, he gets to come in and take over and get those um, those minutes. And he gets to get an opportunity to score and do his thing. You still have another ball handler. <sighs> I'm sorry. And depending on your rotation, um, if you take Adams in, if you take out Adams for Gomez, fine. But depending on who your first guard is, if it's Josh Hart or Kira, you still got someone, uh, a veteran, to like govern or watch over them and make sure they don't do anything too crazy. Um, that's what I would do. That's how I would fix that issue. But really, they just need, they need a veteran presence. Uh, this team really needs an Andre Iguodala. Like, this team would be extremely solid. And it, Andre Iguodala would fill every hole on this team. Um, especially in the bench unit. And he could come play with the starters if need be, too. He, they really need an Andre Iguodala. Um, having said that, look, this backcourt is menacing right now. I don't like Bledsoe on the defense as much as you know some people do, but this backcourt has the potential to be very threatening defensively. Um, what I don't like is their matchup against uh, shooting backcourts where both of the backcourt players can shoot um, or they have really athletic backcourts. That Houston matchup is going to be a problem. It was a problem last time. It's going to be a problem this time. Um, 
the Kings matchup where you had Fox Ver and Fox and Buddy versus them two. Lonzo was checking Buddy, but Bledsoe was getting smoked by Fox. Like that, Bledsoe is going to be the weak weak link in them defensively. Um, look, man. There's some good things to take away from this Pels team, especially now, but there's some things I really don't like. Uh, as I posted on Twitter, and I'm going to impart this information to you guys, with the way Lonzo has been playing recently, Lonzo is going to be entitled to an 18 to $22 million contract. Even if his numbers improve, he got 16 points tonight. That means 12 out of the 19 games he's played, he's gotten over 12 points. That's that's. I went and did this research the other day before the game yesterday and the game today, so that's how I know. This makes 12. Even if he doesn't crack that tomorrow uh, on Wednesday, no, Tuesday, I think is the next game. Even if he doesn't crack that on Tuesday, 12 out of 20 games that he's played and he's cracked – that that's what if I'm going my math is correct that's 60 60 percent of the games he's going to get more than 12 points a game market improvement from where he was a year ago so on that trajectory if he's still increasing which I think he is he's gonna be around 14 15 16 for the season that's gonna be where Zo is gonna be at, at by year's end a guy who's giving you 16, 5, and 5 in second team, all team defense, who still has playmaking ability, I don't get how you don't pay someone 20, 21, 22 million. Fred Van Vleet just got 22. There's no way in hell he's better than Lonzo. This Lonzo that we're seeing, there's no way in hell he's better. Period. You're going to have to pay this man. Look, all intents and purposes, unless like they're gonna have to they're gonna have to get rid of Bledsoe for a better fit for this team. This team really don't take off. But here's here's the problem, y'all. That Steven Adams contract is gonna hurt them. They cannot, they will not be able to resign Lonzo Ball unless he takes a pay cut. Lonzo is still gonna have to get traded. I'm sorry. He's either gonna have to get traded or they're gonna have to play the rest of the season out with him. And they're going to have to let him walk. I'm sorry. That's the only two options. At this point, the way Lonzo is, his value is peaking. You got to trade him. You, you got to trade him if, you, if you're the Pelicans. And it sucks, but this is the bad contracts, the bad drafting. This is the final result of a poorly ran franchise. And I'm telling you guys this right now because I know there's a lot of people who are like, oh, we need to keep him. They can't keep him. They can't afford to keep him. And if you know you can't afford to keep him, what do you have to do? You got to trade him for assets. You're going to have to trade him for assets. Chicago has got, has got to be on this phone making a phone call. You know, some of these teams, they really have, they, they have the pieces to move to get zoned. A couple other teams do too. But between them and Orlando specifically, they need him. And they have they have the stuff to get him. But look, this is a phenomenal game. Like, let's let's just for a second to go back and revisit these stats. 27 from BI, 29 from Zion. So both both of them got what 56 for the game. Um, I think they both had six blocks total for the game. Freaking ridiculous. Eight assists, 16 rebounds. Very good. Um, your backcourt got 37, 11, and freaking 12. Outstanding. You know, overall shooting between the four and probably shooting somewhere in the range of uh, 59 to 62%. That is fantastic. You're starting... Four, four of your starters together got you, what, 92 points-ish? My man, I'm just taking a rough guesstimate. That's, what, 37, so that's, what, 40, 56, that's uh, 60. That's almost 100, you know, and I rounded up, what, three or four? Yeah, so that's, like, 93. Yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty much 
<laughs> 93 points from your starters, but your bench ain't giving you anything. You would trade Lonzo and get in requisite parts to help you out on the bench. That'll give you the cap alleviation. You don't have to worry about Lonzo. And you could deal with JJ and Bledsoe in the offseason if you don't trade Bledsoe. But I'm telling you, he's, he can't stay on this team. He It's unfortunate, but they're in cap hell. This is poorly ran. This is a poorly ran franchise. There's no excuse for this. And you still got to pay Josh Hart. Josh Hart is due. JJ obviously isn't coming back. And now you got to pick up options on Jackson Hayes. Nico Melli, Nikhil Alexander Walker, and Zion. I can't even. Will, Willie Hernan Gomez won't even be on this team next year because I think he has a not fully guaranteed contract. He has a non guaranteed contract. Your bitch, just going through this Josh Hart, restricted free agent. JJ Reddick, free agent. Willie Hernan Gomez. Non fully guaranteed contract, so he can walk and go somewhere, and someone is going to take him if he keeps producing on this bench. Kira Lewis is a rookie; you don't have to worry about him. Nikhil Alexander Walker, are you going to take his option? Jackson Hayes, are you going to take his option? Nico Melli, you probably won't take up his option. So, what do you have? And I think, I can't remember what Bledsoe's contract number is. It's something egregious. Look, guys, <clears throat> and I know I should probably be talking about the game and stuff, but I, I this is, and I'm going to get back on the game in a second, but look, I just got to keep it 100 with you guys. There is no way in hell this is working out for Zoe. Not on this team. He will be somewhere else. He will be in another uniform or whatever team. Like, look, <clears throat> there's people who thought he was a risk at first. You got to be looking at these games and saying, Point guard play is something the Bulls are missing right now. Especially with Zach Levine, Larry Markin, and Wendell Carter Jr. They're going to have to give up something. They, they're going to have to give up some bench depth or something. They got to get Lonzo. Lonzo on that team, <clears throat> first of all, this number 16, 7 and 7, that's him every night on, that's him every freaking night on the Bulls. Guaranteed. That's him every freaking night. Matter of fact, I would guarantee you Lonzo would get 16, 9, and 7 on the Bulls. Why? He can get, he's getting 16 points right now with no spacing. He's going to get that no problem on that team. Number one. Number two, you got Laurie Markkinen, Floor Spacer, Spacer, Athlete, Wendell Carter Jr., uh, Zach Levine, all the way three level scorer. You are going to get your assist on that team, and they're going to back up and let you run point guard. Number two, if they don't, if they don't trade Kobe White, Kobe White comes off the bench, or they can put Kobe White and slide him over a two guard and make Zach Levine a three. They have so many different options, or they can put Kobe White on the bench and say, "Hey, Lonzo, um, let Kobe run point guard when you're when you're on the bench, and then maybe he could come in next to." He could, Lonzo could come in next to Levine, or I mean, after Levine, you pull Lonzo, get Kobe in. Lonzo will be the next person back in. He'll get some run with Kobe. Kobe play two guard, then Zach Levine comes in and replace him. Look, that team would be ridiculous with him. Y'all already know how I feel about Orlando. Like, like I said, Vucevic is amazing. They're looking to trade Gordon probably. Jonathan Isaac is hurt. You know, and he y'all know how I feel about him. That team, DJ Augustine, they have weapons too. He needs to be on the East Coast team if he's gonna get into an all-star game or become an all-star. Easy. Chicago has to make a move. Clippers, I just don't think have enough or will have enough unless they do something. Like they gave away all their picks to get Paul George. Can't do anything about it. I think Paul George is out hurt too now anyway, so yeah, they're screwed. Hello. Sorry about that. My son is in the background having fun. But uh, back to the game. There's something that I mentioned. Uh, these minutes, too, stick out to me. Brandon Ingram, 34, 59, so 35. Brent, uh, Zion, 33 minutes. Stephen Adams, 29, 20. That's kind of hot for him. Uh, Bledsoe, 
31-23, and Lonzo actually had the second least minutes, but the least minutes at the guard, 30-27. Then you got Josh Hart with 27 minutes off the bench playing heavy minutes for you. But one of the things that is not getting talked about or will be talked about in this game is the defensive communication and the switching between Lonzo and B.I., especially in that fourth quarter. I was seeing some plays, especially the last couple minutes, where those two were communicating on the switches, and they were covering for each other, and they were protecting each other's assignments. And they were literally, like, whatever, who, it didn't matter who the guy was, if if Ja needed to get picked up, B.I. stepped up and took him, and then, uh, what's the guy's name, Dylan Brooks or whatever, Lonzo took him. You know, it didn't matter what the matchup was. They both covered each other, helping, and they were hedging on some of these assignments on the pick and roll. They played outstanding, dynamic duo level defense. The way they played defense remind me of, reminded me of when they were with Luke Walton. But Lonzo's clearly better. He's stronger, more experienced. You know, same thing with Bi. He's he was using his length. Yo. That defense between those two, that was something that was beautiful to watch. Just a person who likes, you know, the little nitpicky things about the game. Watching those two execute defensive scheme and win a game off of that. Look, Lonzo didn't take too many shots in the second half. I was mad he didn't get a shot in the third quarter. I thought that was criminal. There's no way Lonzo shooting as well as he has should not have gotten a shot in the third quarter. He should have at least gotten three cracks at it. He got to take a couple <clears throat> in the fourth. But most of his focus was on locking up Ja and making sure Ja did not get comfortable with the ball. And it affected Ja the entire game, except for when Zoe went out, I think, in the third quarter. He's got like two or three quick buckets against Kira, who really can't guard him. And honestly... Ja's not big, but Kira next to Ja was like, this is like a little boy. It, it was ridiculous. But look, man, he Lonzo, and I told you guys, Lonzo has so many skill sets or skills in his toolbox. He gives the team exactly what they need when they need it. If they needed a little bit of extra punch on the scoring, he gave them 16. They needed a little bit more playmaking out of him. Got seven points. They needed the defense. Gave them that. But it's the timing of it. The beginning of the game, he cooked for them. He was on offense. He was heating up. He was torching them. In the second quarter, he dialed it back a little bit to play make for the rest of the team. But he still hit the necessary shots when it came. You know, got them out in transition. Got them out running pace. He played his position well. Third quarter, he didn't get to get too many opportunities at it, but he was doing little things, setting screens, getting people in position, um, playing defense on Ja, not letting. One of the things that Lonzo did is Lonzo jumped Ja and covered and prevented him from getting the ball. And when he did get the ball, he get he took away all of Ja's movement options which was outstanding. He didn't give him much to work with in this vein. Now, it's going to be a harder matchup in the future when Ja learns to shoot the three ball. But for right now, and based on how you play this, there was a couple times where Lonzo went above the screen and gave Ja head of steam to get to the basket, and he scored. But other than those couple things, he plays excellent defense. Excellent defense. I can't, like, he did a phenomenal job. Going into the fourth quarter, he took a couple shots, and he was feeling himself. He took a transition three. Like I said on Twitter, you, you got to live with some of the bad stuff along with the good. He was feeling it. He was taking shots. He hadn't got his shot in the third quarter. Look, let that shit rip. Let it rip. It's cool. I had no issue with it because guess what? He came back down there, and he got you a layup, and he attacked the basket to ice the game in the last couple minutes of that quarter while also taking John ja Morant out the game so that Brandon Ingram and Zion could close. They closed this game, especially B.I. He was phenomenal closing this game. Bledsoe, too. Bledsoe was, he, he did yesterday what Lonzo did. He closed it. And part, part of me thinks Lonzo probably took a back seat because he had played so hard the other night 
and it allowed Bledsoe to come in and get that going. So that was smart too. But he did the dirty stuff. He did the stuff. Look, if if Lonzo doesn't keep Morant in check, it's not just Morant you got to worry about because Morant is going to help everybody else on the team. This game becomes a lot harder. But fantastic work. I can't complain um, about this. Look, I'm just, like I said, I'm going to keep telling y'all this. There's no way their financial situation is going to work out to where they're going to be able to keep some. Unless they got Rob Palinka, who's going to pull like a bunch of rabbits out of his hat with all these rules and exceptions and tr- twisting and trading and things like that. They're not keeping him. They have to pay the guy. They have to. But if they pay him, who's going to pay Zion? How are they going to match for Zion when he's a RFA? Restricted free, free agent. You know, you just gave Steven Adams that money, especially without seeing how it looked. Steven Adams, I like it. You know, and until another point, I said they should play inside out more. They have been trying to play inside out more. But I got to tell you, with Lonzo shooting the way he's been shooting and Bledsoe been shooting the way he's been shooting all season, look, that floor is starting to open up. They can't even leak off Lonzo right now. That is helping B.I. so much. Look at this. B.I.'s efficiency, 11 of 20, 55%. Five of eight from three. He is getting so much value from just Lonzo Ball existing on the court and playing the way he's been playing the last couple games. Look at this. It's helping everybody on the team that extra space. Even the fact that you have Steven Adams here and all he has is four points. Brandon Ingram and Zion plus Bledsoe, the rest of the starters make up for that. Now, you would like to see more rebounds out of Steven Adams, but let's just be fair. Really didn't need it. They got so much other value. Brandon Ingram got 12. Zion got 5. Eric Bledsoe got 5. Zoe got 7. They did 5. Josh Hart got 8. It's okay. The the value is, is right there just from Lonzo having a better shooting uh, improvement right now. So, look, man. Post this motherfucking stats bleacher report. Um, let's see. They let me look at the turnovers. I didn't talk too much about that. Second unit. Okay, there we go. Excuse me. Turnovers. Kira Lewis two. Willie Hernan Gomez two. JJ Redick one. Right. That's all the turnovers from the bench unit. The starters. Two turnovers. One guy. Zion. Look at this. The starters are playing so freaking clean, and they have to put in so much extra work because their bench is garbage. Minus 16, Josh Hart. Plus minus. Minus 9, J.J. Reddick. Plus minus. Willie Hernan Gomez, minus 14. Minus 16, Kira Lewis. I'm telling you that I'm just going to wait for the trade. I'm just going to wait for the trade cuz it's going to have to happen. They cannot pay. Look, if he does if he comes out and he does this 14 7 14 5 5 against the Houston Rockets with Vic Wall and them boys and I think they're missing Christian Wood now for four, a couple weeks, 4 weeks or something due to injury. If they come out here and he tears it up, it's over. He is playing like the number two overall pick that he was supposed to be. He's actually playing better. The only thing they expected from him is maybe the shooting and the elite passing and court vision. He's giving you that, the rebounding and defense. Number two overall pick, man. People develop at different rates, and I told you guys, this that was game 19. Game 20 is against Houston. We'll have to wait and see. But anyway, that's all I got. Y'all have a good one. Get on they nuts. Bleacher Report. Post them motherfucking stats, because y'all didn't post them the other night. We're going to get on y'all ass tonight. Again, you're going to post them stats. Y'all have a good one.